within the deepest part of the green forest in the grove of all worlds, he sits with his legs crossed beneath the oldest tree. Above him, presides the continual cycle of the moon and the sun. Underneath, his limitless roots web growing further into the secret places of the earth and towards the underworld. All around him, the sweet melody of leaves caressed by the gentle wind, the pulsing and vibrant green world over which he has complete dominion. Appearing in a myriad of forms which made him known to nearly every culture throughout time, Kanunos, an ancient Celtic god representing nature and fertility, was a figure found among both continental and insular people, as far back as the 4th century in the entire region of Gaul. The god is best known in his Celtic aspects of the untamed horned god of the wood, and the leaf-covered green man. A shamanic god of the hunt, able to bring natural enemies into peaceful communion with one another, taming predators and prey so they could settle down together in a quiet manner. This ability cast him as the protector of animals and provider among rural tribes and hunters who had to follow his laws while hunting and harvesting in the wild wood. Kanunos is typically depicted as human or half-human with an antler crown, appearing mostly in a seating position with his legs crossed. He wears a torque around his neck while holding another, a round piece of metal used by the Celts to denote nobility, high status and holiness. His left hand harbors a long ram horn serpent signifying strength and rejuvenation. Though wearing a human face, his concerns and interests do not involve humans whatsoever. The Celtic god represented a force of abundance and prosperity as he is often pictured accompanied by an overflowing sack of plenty, another Roman conjunction with the god Pluto portraying wealth and opulence. The horned god is generally attended by domesticated and wild animals, revered by the Celts for their magical connotations. This is exactly what we see displayed on the relief panel of the Celtic Gundestrup cauldron, featuring a peaceful deity of nature and fruitfulness with his arms raised, in the traditional sitting position taken by shamans frequently shown surrounded by wild animals. He is therefore described as the lord of the forest and the god of wild places. However, due to a lack of written records, details about his cult in the Celtic religion are unknown, so it's not clear how specific he was worshipped or even what exactly he represented. Only few interpretations of his role vary from being the god of animals, nature and fertility, to a god of travel, bi-directionality or even a mediator between opposites. The term Kanunos comes from an ancient Gaelic word translated as the horned one apparently deriving from iconographic rather than linguistic sources, which left the true meaning behind its origin completely dubious. One of its inscription from France bears the motif of a Celtic horned god appearing on a Gallo-Roman monument. Deep within the foundations of the Cathedral of Paris Notre Dame, an erected structure called the Pillar of the Boatman was found, a column bearing relief panels of Greco-Roman gods with Latinized inscriptions on each face. And among them, one shows a figure labeled Canunos, though a bit unclear and difficult to read. The figure is depicted from the shoulders up as a bearded man with the horns of a stag, with wide torques hanging from each one of them. Due to the damage caused on the material, the lower portion has been lost, making it almost impossible to tell for certain that was indeed the Celtic deity. Which leaves us to only assume that the missing panel could have shown the god in his familiar cross-legged position, providing a direct parallel to the antlered figure exposed on the Gundestrup cauldron. Although the presence of a Celtic god on a monument dedicated to the Greco-Roman pantheon is strange, the sculpture was perhaps made to point out an auspicious union between gods of equal importance from different cultures. The Theonum Canunos became conventionally used for describing similar Celtic horned deities whose names have been lost to history. The antlers Canunos wears are those of a deer, lord of the forest that connects with the powers of nature, 
and which doesn't necessarily represent an animal spirit but a deity closely involved with the wild world. Naturally sprouting antlers in spring and shedding them in autumn, closely link the deer with seasons, indicating the seasonal nature of the god as reflected in pagan notions where deities with horns are syncretized with the annual cycle of life, and thus they were assigned with the essence of death and rebirth. During the light half of the year, Kanunos was believed to appear as the child of the land, the embodiment of the growing green world that comes with spring. Then in summer, he is the vegetation god in his foliate aspect of the green man, guardian of the forest and consort of the fertile goddess with whom he would fructify the land, responsible for the growth and proliferation of plants and trees. Interesting enough, as the master of the sacrificial hunt, his life is given away for the birth of another, which can be interpreted as the natural law by which the living have to be ruled by, the old must perish to create a way for a young life to blossom. It's in autumn and winter, that we clearly see Kanunos as the sacrificed god, the dark man who begins his otherworldly journey to the world of the dead. In this particular side of the god, he is said to appease the souls of the dead and guide them to the underworld, then return to the earth from which he was born and where the seeds released from his decaying body will impregnate the goddess of the land once more. And again, the god would be born, coming forth to initiate the everlasting cycle of life. There were instances of humans who sought to commune with the Celtic god to receive his powers by clothing themselves with skins, and adorning their bodies with feathers and bones. While seeking him out through the natural world, the seeker can't be followed after entering the god's forest, nor can follow another. Whatever pathways were discovered disappear immediately in passing, and the wood would remain trackless once again. For each individual, the way to the god Kanunos was an entire different experience. Given the mysterious and ambiguous frame of Kanunos in Celtic mythology, no many myths are known of him, and naturally because of his appearance, he is quickly associated with horned devilish figures. There are those who believe that along with Pan, the satyr deity of the Greeks to whom he was often equated with, Kanunos may have inspired the creation of an entity that displayed physical similarities to both gods. The Baphomet the sabbatical goat regarded as the symbol of equilibrium between opposites and a prominent figure in modern witchcraft and Satanism. Another feeding criteria to the denial Christian perspective towards the worship of any horned entities as major gods. The Christian religion not acknowledging the existence of another deity nor sharing polytheist ideology, classified the pagan cult of Kanunos as devil worship. Since then, the depictions of the Celtic god became known to have inspired the biblical imagery associated with Satan in Christianity. One of the first reference of Canunos in literary traditions was that of Hearn the Hunter, mentioned in the play of the Merry Wives of Windsor by William Shakespeare. We can easily see how the poet connects the pagan deity with the ghostly guardian of the Windsor Forest, a royal wood of the English county of Berkshire. But the idea of the horned god was popularized in the god of the witches by the writings of Margaret Murray. In the mainstream of Wiccan theology, the horned god embodies an uncorrupted masculine energy that is in balance with the natural world. The opposition of gender being a fundamental notion in paganism. Pagans conceive the universe as polarized accordingly to male and female energies. With that in mind, we can suppose that Kanunos and the Earth Goddess being both equal but opposite in gender polarity, portray the astral harmony for traditional pagans and Wiccans. Although Kanunos has many forms, the Horned One is without a doubt, his most popular representation in Celtic mythology, which often mislead modern morality into perceiving him as entirely evil. However, as the divine male principality in pagan concepts, he is the father, the son and the wild spirit. He is Kanunos, the perpetual life that never dies. 
Hopefully you enjoy this video of the renowned horned god from Celtic mythology. If there's anything I misinterpreted or missed, you are more than welcome to share your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, stay curious.